Thank you very much, Rick. Um, Matt and I are delighted to talk before this audience about how to start a NGS, a Next Generation Sequencing Laboratory. Uh, here are some information to help you build your own lab, your own NGS lab. Now, within the genetic lab itself, you must, you must separate spaces where the, the pre and the post amplification occur. And I mean separate physically, either using roots or uh, different uh, assigned rooms for each step. You must do that to prevent contamination. Indeed, you all know that PCR is exponentially amplifying the original DNA in the, in the sample by thousands, if not millions of times. It means that a sample with a limited amount of DNA can easily be contaminated by a previously amplified sample, either through aerosols or even physical transfers. It is, in a way, easy to do it, right? It's easy. It's easy to separate the, the clean space where the molecular biology reaction will be set up and the dirty space all between quotes uh, with the amplified material. For the workflow starting with, um, with limited amount of DNA, like, again, an embryo biopsy, you should ideally use a dedicated hood with a dedicated thermocycler, etc. If you use only one room for the full process, uh, use a hood to separate the space and make sure it is positioned away from the, the, the post-amplification workspace. And it's always better to dedicate material for each step. Dedicate pipettes to each step, dedicate vortex, dedicate, um, yeah, maybe thermocycler to each step. And, and even if using a dedicated room for each uh, pre-amplification and post-amplification, which is, by the way, um, the, the best option, use a hood and dedicated material anyway. As a general recommendation, um, the access of the room should be restricted to authorized personnel only. It is also better that the, the rooms for changing clothes and, uh, and washing are separate from the NGS laboratory. Same, separate office space for administrative work should be available outside of the NGS laboratory. The area for cleaning and sterilization of material, if, if uh, present, should be separate from the NGS laboratory. I guess you got my point. The working environment also is important for your employees. So follow the local, national, or even pan-national, like us in Europe, occupational health and safety requirements to provide a safe working environment that minimizes the risk of destruction and of fatigue. Because uh, on top of your employees' work-life quality, uh, the goal is to avoid making a mistake during the analysis, in pipetting or switching samples. Examples, uh, you, you, you can adjust for uh, the bench height to, the, to your personnel. You can use adjustable chairs. You can define the, the adequate box space per person. You can use diff, uh, efficiently the, the space and uh, surfaces. You can use sufficient environmental lighting and air conditioning with uh, control humidity, with control temperature, etc. The clean space with the hood on the left, the dirty space um, on the right. And in between, you have the systems for templating and, and sequencing. You see freezer and fridge. This is a centrifuge. You have a spectrophotometer for quantitation, a thermocycler, obviously, vortex, pipettes, etc. Et you can put the analysis servers and the UPS under the bench. You can also put in the hood a small centrifuge and a vortex and a set, a dedicated set of, uh, of pipettes. And as I said, um, try to avoid contamination and what you one way is uh, if you are not using the full capacity of, uh, of a run, let's say you only run 24 samples at a time, use the other barcodes available for the next run. Do not use again the same 24. It will help you to minimize the, 
the context of the risk. Uh, some lab may want to implement a witnessing system um, when the second operator monitors and checks the, the main operator does not make a mistake. And more does not switch sample tubes by mistake or import samples uh, before the barcoding app. If you are using an integrated next generation system, like the integrated semiconductor sequencer, which, as I explained earlier, combine everything required for completing, sequencing, and analysis into a single box, you can save some relay state as shown here. So I'm going to switch back from one to the other, and you can see that you, see, you can save some space with a single box to do everything. Um, here's a version, obviously, with two rooms, uh, 12 by 12 feet. That's more or less 3.6 by 3.6 meters. You can have a, a door between the two rooms, but if you do so, do not go back uh, from uh, dirty to clean. And if you, even if you have uh, individual doors, uh, once you left typically the dirty room, do not go back the same day or at the very minimum, not coming back, um, do not go back to the clean room with the same lab coat at the very minimum. And again, the same version of a two room lab design with the integrated semiconductor sequencing to, to save space. So I'm gonna also switch uh, back. Just to show you that you can save some uh, some room is limited. All right. Now, and I'm checking on time. Um, let me go into details for some of the elements we, we just discussed. The hood. It can be um, a basic pipetting hood, but at least you should have a UV light system because you need that to clean by breaking the DNA molecules. It's always better to use a hood with a laminar flow also, because it will avoid that the contamination from outside uh, will come into the hood. That said, once the barcodes are added to the samples, it's possible to work on the post PCR area without a hood, but if you can have two hoods, it's always better. I mentioned it a few times already now, you need to make sure that you do not contaminate your samples or other molecular biology re uh, reactions with DNA material from outside. The DNA material from outside can come from a, an operator, a technician, or either cells or threads. It can also come from amplified material from previous. So it's critical, but yet there are simple rules to include in your own standard operation protocol um, that will help you to do so. So use clothing, including gloves and hair cover. It's even more critical for non-invasive PGTA when we start from very, very little amount of DNA release in the embryo culture method. Change gloves after each step of the workflow. So for example, when you build the library, uh, change gloves after DNA extraction, change gloves after the, the first linear pre-amplification and after the, the amplification. All plastic wear, including tips, should be, well, DNA-free, that's kind of obvious, but also DNAs and RNAs free. A good option is always to use dedicated specific set of everything, dedicated set of pipettes, uh, tips for the different steps, for library construction, for quantification, for instrument setup, please. Finally, uh, you can use decontamination, DNA decontamination solution like 1% bleach or UV radiation, typically 244 nanometers for five minutes or uh, half an hour after, after that. Um, do that after each really uh, each um, each workflow step, and uh, at the end of the run, typically you, you can you can uh, wash everything again with the, with sodium hydroxide. In terms of um, ancillary equipment, an NGS lab, at the end of the day, is a basic molecular biology lab. So of course, you need a, a thermocycler for the QPCR steps, and you need accurate pipettes with uh, secure attachments so that the tips stay in place, don't go away, and the pipetted volumes are the good ones. 
you need vortex, you need a plate centrifuges, you need tube centrifuges, uh, small ones to go on the bench or in the hood. Uh, for the analysis, you will need a server. We recommend always a server. On-site analysis is always better uh, compared to cloud analysis because one, you keep control of your data, and two, it's typically much faster. You don't have to upload. So unless you are using an integrated sequencer, which again includes the, the analysis server, you get a server dedicated to the analysis. And then depending on your policy and the regulation in your territory, you may also want a server to store the data. Finally, it's always safer to secure the power in your lab with the UPS. So again, a tip, put UPS and server under the bench if, if they need to be in the same room, otherwise put them in the other room. Talking about benches, um, you only need to make sure that they can stand a few hundred uh, pounds and they are steady. Uh, since some instruments, like uh, centrifuges, can generate vibrations. So do not install an equipment generating vibrations on the same deck as an instrument uh, sensitive, like uh, using pipettes or sensor. What you can do also is you, you, you may consider to use a multi-vibration table if your lab is located on a very, very high floor in the building, or if you are near a transportation like a train station. Next, storage. So nowadays, kits for running PGTA come as ready-to-use cartridges or bottles, and small bottles with tubes, either store frozen, cool, or at room temperature. So you will also need to store sometimes the libraries during the run if you need to reuse them or if it is in your SOP to do so. So in consequence, you need to plan for adequate storage space. So even though a fridge freezer combo may be enough to start with, depending on how many times you run, you, you will need more space. So maybe a, a standalone dedicated freezer will, will be required. And, and the one tip I have for you is be careful sometimes the instruments you are using, they need access from the top uh, for service, for maintenance. So if so, don't install uh, shelves on top of these instruments. In terms of uh, air management, using a positive pressure in the lab is always a good idea. All potential contaminants as aerosol will stay um, outside. And I mentioned before the, the need to avoid uh, VOC. So make sure that um, if you use filters, to use a high efficiency particulate air filters that also retain VOC. It's not necessarily the case, so check with your provider. I'm almost done, Matt. Um, you have this great lab built and running, and you generate perfect uh, PGTA data by low pass whole genome sequencing on semiconductor sequencer. Now, how to analyze and manage all this data? Um, in terms of analysis, you don't need a bioinformatician. You should not need a bioinformatician. So make sure that you are using a PGT solution that use workflows, generating easy to interpret results as plots and tables like you can see here in, in this example. Um, uh, plots on the left here show ploidy on the y axis and the different uh, chromosome on x axis with or without moving, detection of segmental events, mosaicism, etc. And the same information is on the table on the right. And to manage the data flow, you may want to, to establish a laboratory information management system, the LIMS. You may want to do that. Um, the job of the LIMS is to give you insights um, about beyond what you would get from a simple sample tracking. It should help you to understand the health of your lab, ease the lives of your staff, and ensure the highest level of conformity to regular story standards. LIMS can be used to support your lab also with a variety of connectivity endpoints, automation interfaces, and statistical methods. And as a Lean solution, it should support you at any instrument or automation platform. It, it should integrate seamlessly to automate the, the pooling of QC values, generation of liquid and glorifies, et cetera, et cetera. 
Finally, the LIMSA should also support ancillary activities beyond NGS workflow, with best in class biorepository, for example. And it should also manage a full suite of analytical tools uh, to, to automate your KPI tracking, etc. So think about the links. It can really make your life much easier and, and, and your, uh, your process uh, stronger. Finally, we, we, we talk a lot about materials. So what about the, the humans required to run uh, NGS PGT research lab? I already mentioned that you don't need a bioinformatician, but really to run, to run your lab, you, you need a single employee, a single good uh, technician, typically earning a two-year degree in molecular biology. You can always decide for, uh, to use a higher profile if you are running a cap addict, addicted lab. But, and uh, we discussed the possibility to witness some steps, so you may want to adapt the number of employees accordingly. Continuous training is a must, and validation of the knowledge too. So ask your solution provider to help you with that. As far as uh, interpreting the, the results and validating the results, what, what I call the, the, the desk, um, really the requirement will vary depending on, uh, on the country. So typically, it's a director level with a PhD or a medical degree. And uh, yeah, uh, again, just for as for the, the bench, continuous training and validation is, uh, is a 